Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast this morning. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Today on the show, we are going to be zeroing in on one state, Upnot. Uh, we'll be looking at one year in office, challenges, successes of Muftuang's administration. And we'll be talking to the Commissioner for Information for that state. We'll be, uh, from time to time, trying to review what the states have been up to in the past uh, 365 days or more that they have the new administration has been in office. And today, we're zeroing, zeroing in on uh, that one state up not. Uh, we are also going to be looking at top trending issues uh, that um, or stories that made uh, or, or captured our attention, as we always said, uh, or we've always said rather, uh, today. We'll also be looking at the papers on what we call of the press. We'll be lifting the headlines from some of our national dailies uh, to bring to you. First of all, let's just uh, look at some top trending issues. One person has been confirmed uh, dead, several others injured, and 30 persons, including the site manager, also injured in uh, a, an unfortunate event in uh, the mine up north in Niger State. Uh, the manager and others are still trapped as at midnight uh, when the pit collapsed in the Galkago community, Shiroro local government area of Niger State. The mishap was said to have occurred on Monday after a heavy downpour. Now, confirming the disaster in a statement, Abdullahi Ara, Director General of the Niger State Emergency Management Agency in Sema, said rescue operations have been hampered by the difficult terrain and banditry. He also noted that the agency had yet to get full details on rescue operations due to insecurity in the area. The mine site belongs to a company named African Minerals and Logistics Limited. The cause of the collapse was as a result of the rainfall that softened the soil. Due to the unacceptable nature of the environment as a result of banditry, the information of the incident is very scanty, including rescue operations. Meanwhile, excavators have been deployed for the rescue operations. Uh, more than 30 persons are reportedly trapped beneath the rubble. We do hope that um, more people will be rescued and uh, the death toll will not rise as high as um, uh, it looks like it's going to rise because if the terrain is bad, banditry is uh, worsening the situation and all that, uh, there may be a problem there. We, for those who have already gone, uh, we, we pray that uh, their souls find peace in the Lord. Now, President Tinubu names Abuja Highway after Wole Shoyinka. Uh, that is another top trending issue. The President Tinubu has named Abuja Highway after Nobel Laureate Wole Shoyinka. Tinubu is naming the road after Shoyinka, who will be 90 in July, on July 13. Uh, highlighted and it highlighted his contributions to literature and his role in elevating Nigeria's global cultural standing. The president also asserted that the novelist had brought honor and fame to Nigeria through his unparalleled contributions to literature and his unwavering commitment to human rights and social justice. Tinubu added that the gesture is a fitting tribute to a man who has dedicated his life to the pursuit of truth, freedom, and artistic excellence. Professor Wole Shoyinka has brought immense honor and fame to Nigeria through his unparalleled contributions to literature and his unwavering commitment to human rights and social justice. That is uh, quoting directly what the president said. And he continued by saying, naming this highway after him is a fitting tribute to a man who has dedicated his life to the pursuit of truth, freedom, and artistic excellence. The president said the project reinforces his government's commitment to enhancing infrastructure and fostering uh, sustainable development. The completion of this strategic project underscores uh, the direction or the dedication to building a robust and resilient infrastructure that meets the needs of the growing population of Nigeria and stimulates the economic growth. And according to the president, he's also aware that the project enabled the creation of employment opportunities for over 1,500 Nigerians. And that was commendable and serves as a credit to the renewed hope agenda for creating job opportunities for the teeming youths. Well, congratulations to uh, Professor Wole Shoyinka. It's good to be celebrated while you're still alive so that you see that your labor 
uh, has not been in vain. Tinubu put us on the uh, literary map a long time ago when he won the Nobel Prize for Literature, and uh, it was a pride to Nigeria. He's always been a vocal voice, uh, even though sometimes uh, uh, some people will have divergent uh, opinions about uh, how loud and in what direction that voice is, uh, is uh, sounding. But nevertheless, he's been steadfast. He's been, he's been very, very vocal uh, when he has a conviction about something. Whether you like it or not, he will say it. And that's, that's, that's just good for, uh, for us. Say the truth, say your truth, uh, no matter how it sits with the next person. Uh, whatever the judgment of whether that truth is good or bad, it re remains on the person who is uh, receiving it, and that's all. So, Professor Tinubu, congratulations to you for this recognition given by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And we do hope that a lot of other people, uh, heroes past and present, will be recognized in one way or the other. Uh, just like MKO Abiola, after a long time, was recognized. And June 12 now, we remember him every year. We also have a national stadium named after him and so many other things. So whatever you're doing, remember that someone somewhere is uh, listening, someone somewhere is watching, and one day that recognition will come to you. And also remember that when you leave these uh, shores, uh, you don't leave anything behind that is greater than your name. So. Be mindful what you'll be remembered for. That is what everybody should uh, be thinking about because um, you should be concerned about legacies that you are leaving behind when you're no more here. So what are the legacies you're leaving behind? How much have you contributed to building Nigeria to the Nigeria of your dream uh, that when you leave, people will remember you positively for those things? Well, once again, congratulations to uh, Professor Ole Shainka. The next is that President Bola Tinubu has um, directed the Minister of Finance, Wale Edu, to present the cost implications for a new minimum wage within two days. Tinubu gave the order at a meeting with the government negotiation team led by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akume, at the Presidential Villa in Abuja. The Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, disclosed this in an interview Idris said the president had a meeting with the representatives of the federal government in the negotiation with the labor on the minimum wage. He noted, and I quote, the president has just summoned a meeting of all those who negotiated on behalf of the federal government, led by the secretary to the government of this federation. The minister of finance was there, the minister of budget planning, the minister of information, the minister of budget and national planning, the minister of labor, and the NNPCL GMD. The President has directed the Minister of Finance to do the numbers and get back to him between today and tomorrow so that we can have figures ready for negotiation with Labour. Those were his words. Um, he's been given two days. I don't know whether the two days was from yesterday or from today, uh, but um, the Labour also has given seven days to just uh, sit and watch and see what the federal government is going to do. So uh, seven days, it began yesterday, I think. So in the next six days, we'll be hearing uh, what will happen. Two days out of that will be like three days already out. So if they present that and Labour finds it still unattractive, uh, we don't know what will happen. But I'm, I'm glad that two days uh, is what has been given. Whatever it is, adjustments can be made. I'm just asking the questions. If these numbers can be done within two days and the negotiation can, be, uh, can reach ahead where we can find solutions, uh, what has been keeping this tripartite committee since? It's been almost a year that this committee was set uh, to, to look into the minimum wage and uh, nothing much has come out of it. We're still where we are right now. We know what happened even just... Uh, the strike that happened on Monday and Tuesday, how we suffered. There was no light anywhere, no power to do anything. Uh, there was no um, body working in the hospitals. I, I visited a hospital and saw that the, 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 the workers there had downed tools, even though there were still people there. For instance, if you needed blood, the blood bank was, uh, was, was closed. 
So we don't know how many people may have lost their lives or whose conditions may have become worse because of that. We saw that happening in so many other sectors that are really, really important. And then when you're trying to say that uh, labor should not be so heartless, and then you're also asking yourself, why did they get to this point? What happened? And then they got to this point and all that. No, nobody is saying anybody did something good, but whenever an agreement is reached, this should be followed uh, to the letter. Wherever a condition has been met, uh, we'll see we should see how we can find a way around it. But the bottom line is government should make a conscious effort to be trustworthy so that they can give their word and say, okay, Labour, you're asking for this, and because you're asking for this, we will do X, Y, Z, and Labour will believe. But if you're, until you get to that point where you can be believed, no matter what you do as a government, it will always end in this kind of fisticuffs, if I call it, is almost like they're in a ring and fighting all the time. And we, the citizens, are the ones that are suffering. So government should make a conscious effort to be always believable, to be always trustworthy, so that whatever they say they will do, people will believe that they will do. And every Nigerian will work towards making sure that uh, promise becomes a success because government cannot do it alone. But in the fa face of uh, blatant, well, that's how a lot of people see it, blatant lies, uh, you say one thing and you, you do another, then government will always be untrustworthy. And if that happens, then we're going to find ourselves in situations like this. So we pray that um, the government will find solution, labor will be, uh, will find uh, it in their heart to always to always shift ground and see what is realizable what is uh, doable and so many other things and we also hope that while government is negotiating we've always said it on this program that not only should they be talking about how much they will pay NLC they should be talking about how how much they will go to make sure that uh, whatever is the problem with uh, labor or the people of Nigeria will be addressed in a jiffy so whatever is causing the hardship should be looked into and we we'll see what can be done because just raising the the amount of money for for workers may not just uh, bring the solutions that we're looking for it might exacerbate all the problems that we have in nigeria we hope it doesn't get to that anyway this is our nigeria we need to make it work okay so uh, that's the much on our on the top trending issues. We'll take a short break, uh, look at the quote for the day, look at the weather and every other thing. And when we return, hopefully we'll be doing off the press. Stay with us. <laughs>